On New Year's Day, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing millions of slaves in the Confederate States. Lincoln listened to the voices of people long committed to the cause of abolishing slavery in America, like those behind a newspaper called The Emancipator. Now, two centuries after it was born, The Emancipator is publishing again, with a fresh eye on some of the country's lingering challenges. Harry Smith has our Sunday Spotlight. Summer 2020. No no peace. There was anger. I'm tired of feeling unsafe. There was anguish on the streets. From that season of unrest came an idea for a new kind of news. It's called The Emancipator. We need to be emancipated from misinformation, disinformation, from extremism, from hate, from xenophobia. We have a lot to be emancipated from. So it's a perfect name. The original Emancipator was America's first abolitionist newspaper, published in Jonesboro, Tennessee in 1820. At the time, a most radical idea. And now... It may be radical and bold to say we need to call for the immediate end of racism, of racial injustice, of racial inequality. But why is that such a bold idea? Why can't we do that? And why can't we do that with journalism? Deborah Douglas and Amber Payne are co-editors of the website, conceived by the Boston Globe and Boston University Center on Anti-Racist Research. In last month's debut, a thoughtful, fact-filled report showing how black student loan debt severely increases the racial wealth gap. When you put out a sharp opinion, an evidence-based opinion that's backed up, with with facts with details you can really change minds and perhaps you can change hearts you could maybe you could change laws the emancipator seeks to be more than an opinion page more than a soapbox it is in search of voices of change some unheard there are people in communities who are agents of their own salvation but they don't often get the amplification in traditional media to show the work that they're doing on the ground different voices different methods in The Emancipator, you'll find a comic strip. This one unveils the little-known truth of Dewey from the Dewey Decimal System. File under appalling. The Emancipator hopes to build a sense of community, unafraid of America's unvarnished truths. A lot of times, systems don't even have us in mind. It wasn't created that way. It wasn't exactly. Built that it wasn't way. made for us. But if we're all Americans, right, and we're interested in investing in the American project, then we're duty bound to deconstruct these systems and rebuild them back up so we all can benefit from it. We wondered, though, the emancipator, why in Boston? Amber and Deborah took me to the African Meeting House, wow. built in 1806. So this is the center of black political culture, life, spirituality, education, right here in Boston. This was where our organizing was happening. This was really the heartbeat of the black community. And this is the oldest standing black church building in the country right now. And it was a center for abolitionist activity. William Lord Garrison spoke here, Mariah Stewart, Frederick Douglass. Spoke here. Right here. Right here. Yeah. We stood for a moment in silence, certain we could still hear their voices. For Sunday Today, Harry Smith, Boston. Harry, thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.